Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Misty Howick, and this is the Wisdom of the Proverbs. This is a New Song United Methodist Church um, Lenten ministry that we're doing where um, I do a little devotional at around 2 o'clock every weekday, and we work our way through the Proverbs. Um, so if this, uh, if you haven't taken on a Lenten discipline yet at all, uh, this is a way that you can uh, do something during Lent to kind of grow closer to God and, and do an extra reflection. Um, I like Proverbs. I like the wisdom uh, traditions of the Hebrew Bible. I'm a particular fan of Ecclesiastes, actually. So um, the Proverbs are challenging. They're challenging to reflect on in today's context, and they're challenging to um, look at based on the context that they were written in. Today we're going to look at chapter 4, and I hope that you're joining along with me. Um, and if you are, then good for you. We've made it past the first three chapters of Proverbs, and we're in Pro Proverbs 4. Today I am going to be re reading out of the Jewish Study Bible and uh, offering some insights of chapter 4 based on what it says here. And so it will be kind of a light day, and then tomorrow uh, we'll do chapter 5. You will continue to see some reoccurring themes, and uh, we'll point those out. This week, or today, boy, I'm already set for the whole week, it seems like. Um, it is the advice of a parent to a child. Specifically, it says, from a father to a son. Uh, tradition has it that Solomon wrote Proverbs as well as um, Ecclesiastes, and uh, some, some of it probably was written in the time of Solomon, but... Uh, historical critics have looked at this particular book and said that there is is some pretty significant evidence that not all of it was written uh, in the time of Solomon. So it could be from Solomon to Solomon's sons. So we can keep that in mind. It goes, sons, heed the discipline of a father. Listen and learn discernment, for I give you good instruction. Do not forsake my teaching. Once I was a son to my father the tender darling of my mother. He instructed me and said to me, let your mind hold on to my words. Keep my commandments and you will live. Acquire wisdom, acquire discernment, do not forget and do not swerve from my words. Do not forsake her and she will guard you. Love her and she will protect you. The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom. With all your acquisitions, acquire discernment. Hug her to you, and she will exalt you. She will bring you honor if you embrace her. She will adorn your head with a graceful wreath and crown you with a glorious diadem. And a diadem is like a crown. It's like a crown. So, uh, or a tiara, I should say, like a headband, beautiful headband. Uh, so here I'm going to pause for a second to reflect on um, this wisdom of the Kathubim. Uh, loving wisdom and hating evil. The notes here say the speaker recounts how he received instruction from his own father and quotes his teaching. The message is, get wisdom. I love that. In verse, in verse 7, the beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom. So uh, pretty straightforward right there for you all. Um, that is the beginning. You must first obtain it. Um, not, not really. Not very helpful. Um, but it is, says it's not enough to obey wisdom. One must love it, just as one must love God. The first step in attaining wisdom is to acquire or absorb the teachings of wisdom to hear and assimilate them even before one can properly understand and apply them. So we have to hear wisdom. We have to uh, study. We have to look at other people's experiences and what they have learned before we can understand and apply it. I wonder how how you interpret that. What is your interpretation of that particular section on wisdom? I'm going to go ahead and continue on with chapter 10 or verse 10 in chapter 4. My son heed and take in my words and you will have many years of life. I instruct you in the way of wisdom. I guide you in straight courses. You will walk without breaking stride. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold fast to discipline, do not let go. Keep it, it is your life. Do not enter on the path of the wicked. Do not walk on the way of evil men. 
Avoid it. Do not pass through it. Turn away from it. Pass it by. For they cannot sleep unless they have done evil. Unless they make someone fall, they are robbed of sleep. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of lawlessness. The path of the righteous is like radiant sunlight, ever brightening until noon. The way of the wicked is all darkness, and they do not know what will make them stumble. I'm going to take a break here. Um, it says in verse 11, I guide you in straight courses. And it offers two different paths. This is from the notes here. One who chooses the right course of behavior will naturally find themselves going in the right direction and will prosper and be safe. One must avoid the twisted and murky path of the wicked, for the wicked live in turmoil and anxiety. Um, one way that wisdom is conveyed is through, conveyed is through discipline. Um, that, is, that is a practice. It generally implies physical chastisement of some sort. Even this kind of teaching must be embraced passionately. The values of the wicked are twisted. They live on wickedness and lawlessness. Uh, I was reflecting on this with a Bible study group last night. We were kind of hypothesizing about why people make bad decisions. Our um, Lenten study is about sin, and, and our first topic is just identifying sin in our own lives and in the world. And so we did, we took a moment and we're wondering what kind of brokenness leads to broken decisions and broken actions and pain and suffering. And, you know, we had to stop ourselves because the reality is, is who knows what's going on, right? Uh, the only thing we can hypothesize about is when we do wrong actions, what is going on? So um, I was thinking about, uh, you know, do not walk on the way of evil men. Um, they cannot sleep unless they have done evil. You know, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's something that we can reflect on even now is, um, you know, there are no evil people. There are only evil decisions. There are only evil actions. Uh, I, I'd be interested in knowing your thoughts on that. All right, let's continue with verse 20. My son, listen to my speech. Incline your ear to my words. Do not lose sight of them. Keep them in your mind. They are life to him who finds them, healing for his whole body. More than all that you guard, guard your mind, for it is the source of life. Put crooked speech behind, away from you. Keep devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look forward, your gaze be straight ahead. Survey the course you take, and all your ways will prosper. Do not swerve to the right or the left, and keep your feet from evil. So the comparison here is of the last section. Instead of having two paths, you only have one path, and you need to make sure that you stay straight on it and that you don't veer off. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, that uh, the idea of straightness is one that is in the Hebrew Bible of, of righteousness and obedience and making sure that like there are there are very fine lines on the edges of where you need your decisions and where you need to be and so you need to make sure that you don't cross over those lines that you obey the laws that you obey all of this and you don't stray so nowadays we um, you know we do want to make sure we're obedient but we also believe in the grace of God that kind of keeps pushing us back onto a path that we're supposed to be on and we also identify that sometimes God gives us multiple paths to take and um, I like to believe that all paths lead to God so um, I'm hoping that's true and that all paths you know even if we need correction uh, we always continue down that road so share with me your thoughts I'm uh, interested in what you think and if you find any resources that mean a lot to you about Proverbs or uh, information or wisdom that you have gained from the wisdom literature share that as well and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow uh, about two o'clock God bless you and have a great day